Maryland men's lacrosse always has high expectations, and they're only getting higher. The number eight team in the country experienced some bumps in the road against top-ranked teams, but took care of business throughout the season as they entered the Big Ten tournament. We'll break down the highs and lows from this season and what lies ahead for John Tillman's squad on this edition of the Left Bench in Focus. No matter who your matchup is, like you can you can do something special out there. So I think our guys kind of had a good sense of what the plan was and they executed it. Welcome back to the Left Bench in Focus, brought to you by Terrapin Sports Central. I'm Ben Wolf, alongside my main man, Andrew McBride. And Andrew, it's that time of year where all eyes are on Maryland lacrosse entering tournament play. It is, and Ben, I've been waiting to attack this one all week, just like the Terps have been waiting to attack and take down the Nittany Lions. Wow, Andrew, you're loaded with jokes every single time we're behind the desk now. Anyways, let's take a look at how the hard shells have gotten to the postseason. Maryland lacrosse has continued its winning ways but has had a bumpier season than past years. As one of the premier programs in the nation, Maryland faced nine ranked opponents out of their 12-game regular season. The Terps had some success early on, winning their first four games against Richmond, Loyola, Princeton, and Syracuse. But then, the Terps season started to spiral, losing three out of their next four. The Hard Shells would go on to pick up a gritty win against their upcoming opponent, Penn State, but would close out the regular season by dropping the rivalry game against Johns Hopkins. Despite the ups and downs, the Terps still finished third in the Big Ten with an overall record of 8-4. The Terps enter the Big Ten tournament as the two-seed, and they'll have a rematch with three-seeded Penn State on Thursday. The Nittany Lions are 10-3 on the year with notable wins over Yale, Cornell, and Michigan. The two squads squared off on March 31st in State College, where the Terps ripped six unanswered goals in the fourth quarter to take a three-goal lead with six minutes left and never looked back, winning 13-11. If Tillman's team can replicate that late game performance in the rematch with PSU, they'll have the chance to play the winner of number one Johns Hopkins and number four Michigan in the championship game on May 4th. Maryland lost to both teams this season in close games. To take a closer look at Maryland's chances to succeed in the postseason, we are welcomed by TSC's very own editor-in-chief and lacrosse beat reporter, Josh Panapento. Welcome back, Josh. Yeah, thanks for having me. Of course. So, to get things started, exactly a month ago, the Terps erupted for a huge fourth quarter win to secure a statement win over Penn State, who was ranked number four at the time. What did you see in that game that the Terps did well, and what did they need to do again in the second matchup to beat them again, which is very hard to do? Yeah, I mean, you said it. That's very, very hard to do. I mean, that team that we saw in the second half against Penn State, they scored six goals in that fourth quarter. Since that game, they're averaging eight goals a game. They just need to find that magic they had against Penn State that first time. The offense can be special. They just need to go actually prove it and be special. Um, and building off Andrew's question, if the Terps are able to pull off a win against an extremely strong Penn State team, do you think Maryland will be able to avenge some of their previous losses to Johns Hopkins or Michigan in the Big Ten final? Yeah, I mean, it's tough because they're going to have to play two games in three days. And we also said earlier, you know, tough to beat a team twice. That goes for Hopkins and Michigan, too. This is a very well-coached team. I think that John Tillman has prepared for both uh, Michigan and Johns Hopkins. It's just going to be about which one it is. They're going to, if they get past Penn State, not a lot of rest, but I think if the offense steps up in the Penn State game, they'll have some momentum, they'll have some confidence, they'll be able to take down anybody. And Josh, late in the season, especially in tournament games, it's important for players to step up and play at a higher level than they're expected to, to help the team win game, games. So what terms are you looking at in the Big Ten tournament to elevate their play to give Maryland a better chance at winning? Yeah, I mean, just some of the offensive guys that have shown us that they've been good earlier this season. You look at, like, a Eric Spanos or Braden Erksa. They've been so good all year. Just the last couple weeks, it hasn't been the same. But coming off of 12 days of rest, I think they'll be able to find that magic. Defensively, there's no specific players that need to step up because they've all really been killing it recently. They just need to stay confident and keep doing what they're doing. Now, taking a look at the NCAA tournament, what does Maryland have to do in order to bring home another national title? Yeah, I mean, aside from what they're actually doing on the field, I think these young guys just need to look towards the leadership. There's a lot of guys on the team that were on the team two years ago when they won the national championship, like Logan McNaney, Ajax Zapatello, Luke Weirman. Look, at, look to those guys. Those guys know what it takes to win. They know how to handle the moment. 
So if these young guys just look to them, look at their leadership, they'll be able to do it. All right, Josh, well, that's all we have for you. Thank you so much for joining us and filling us in. And uh, we'll be looking forward to see if John Tillman listens to your advice because you know ball. Oh, for sure. <laughs> we'll be back later with Josh, a few more guests to see if they remember some big plays Maryland made this season. Be sure to follow Josh on X at Josh Penapento. Four Maryland players walked away with Big Ten end of season awards. Headlined by Ajax Apatello, who was named the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year and first team All Big Ten. The senior defenseman was a brick wall for the Terps this season. Zapatello is the fifth Terp to win DPOY, making it four straight years the Terps bring home this award. Alongside Zapatello, Eric Spanos and Luke Weirman were named to the second team All Big Ten, with Gabe Goforth rounding out the awards as Maryland's 2024 Big Ten Sportsmanship honoree. With Big Ten award winning players come some big expectations, not just in the regular season, but especially in the postseason. Wesley Schnell joins us in Studio B with more on how these Big Ten stars can impact Maryland's path to a conference title. Wesley? These all Big Ten players helped Maryland lock up that number two seed in conference tournament, and three names stand out when reflecting on the season and looking ahead to postseason play. First up is this year's Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year, Ajax Zapatello. Zapatello led the team with 18 caused turnovers this season and finished third in the Big Ten in forced turnovers per game. Zapatello also finished third on the team for ground balls, which is huge for a defenseman. Ahead in the tournament, it is almost certain Zapatello will be guarding the opposing team's top scorer. He'll need to force turnovers, scoop up ground balls, and most importantly, turn defense into offense like he did all regular season long. Zapatello may be the biggest piece moving forward, shutting down offensive players. The next guy to keep an eye on in the postseason is Eric Spanos, who was named to the All Big Ten second team. Spanos finished third on the team in goals and assists and second in total points. Spanos has been a reliable source of scoring for the Terps starting every game this season. His game shines from taking the ball from behind the net and initiating the offense. Spanos will be the captain of the offensive ship in the Big Ten tournament and beyond, so he'll have to continue to be the facilitator. Finally, Luke Weirman has to be mentioned, not just because of what he did during the regular season, but because of how important his role will be for maintaining possession. Weirman was named to the All Big Ten second team and for a good reason. He was second in the Big Ten in faceoffs won, faceoff percentage of qualified faceoff men, and ground balls picked up. And if Weirman can score a couple of goals straight off the faceoff, it's proven Maryland can build easy early leads in games. Scoring, games off, scoring goals off the faceoff sends him right back to the X, and I like his chances whenever he's at the faceoff X. Weirman has been consistent this season. The question becomes, can he keep up these high numbers in the postseason? Because possessions matter if the Terps want to outscore their opponents. And guys, I think the biggest thing in the postseason is keeping the ball. And the guys I mentioned will have a big say in doing so. Zapatel will have to keep the ball out of opponents' hands. Spanos will need to continue to initiate the offense soundly. And Weirman will need to win face-offs if Maryland wants to bring some more hardware back to College Park. Thanks, Wes. And Ben, we asked Josh and Brandon before about how important it is that Terps step up in this postseason to bring them to the next level and win a championship. And I think that those three players that Wesley highlighted are huge act factors to give them a better chance to win the game. Yeah, I mean, and definitely Zapatello. He is a dog out there. After watching Maryland lacrosse and looking more into his film, preparing for our show, whether it's running through uh, other players or locking up the best player on the field, I mean, he is going to be a pivotal piece for this Maryland team. That man's a beast. Now don't go anywhere because when we come back, we'll be back with some Maryland men's lax gurus to see if they know what happens next. We'll also crown our Offensive Player of the Year, Defensive Player of the Year, and MVP. Don't go anywhere. 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. There's so many rewards in life. You coming into our home was one of the greatest rewards we could have ever had. You know, it took 20 years and I got my third child who was 17 at the time. It's so cool to watch the adult that you've become and you really have done as much for us as you think we've done for you.
Welcome back to the Left Bench in Focus. I'm Ben Wolf, Andrew McBride, and Andrew, I think it's time to try and stump some of the best lacrosse minds on campus with a brand new game. Nate the Choice and Oliver Shack got the best of us in our Baseball in Focus show, but I think we're going to win this go around. There have been a plenty, you could say even a plethora, of jaw dropping plays by men's lack this year. Have you been working on your vocabulary? Why, yes, I have. And since there have been so many great plays, I wonder if some of our colleagues remember them all. We're joined now again by Josh Panapento, and now happy to welcome another writer, Brandon Schwartzberg, and broadcasters Ben Strober and Tyler Lochte on the show. Fellas, how are we feeling? I'm good. feeling good. good. Yeah. good. Yeah. yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to kick some butt. <laughs> all right, all great. Right, so right. here's how the game will work. We're going to play a clip from a play this season, but in the middle of the clip, it's going to pause. And then you guys are going to have to guess what happens next. You guys ready? Yeah, yeah we're go. ready. Let's let's go. Go. All right, let's roll the first Going clip. Uh, I believe that's an Eric Spanos goal. <laughs> that's it. You already got All your right. answer locked in. Locked in. I think so. I'm right. never, I've well, never been more confident. Let's in my test life. Brandon's confidence here. I, I, he answered very fast, so uh, let's let's go ahead and see if his confidence is, is going to work out. And yes, it does. I mean, bang! There we go. Can't challenge Brandon right now. One nothing. You guys will take it immediately. <laughs> All right, let's roll the next clip and see what you got. That was an easy one. It was our first one. It gets to get harder as it goes on. So let's see the next one. What happens oh. here? Hmm. The rivalry game. Would be a big hit. Um, I can't tell who it is, but I'll just guess it's a goal. Irk's a goal. I think so. Do you, does do Ben and Tyler have any guesses? Yeah, do you have a guess? I think this might be a pass over to well, Kelly the there, 45 in front anything? of the net, Ben. What do you think? I think it might be. I'm looking, and I know for a fact that Maryland did not score in the fourth quarter of this game. I know in the first and third quarter they were going towards the south, which did not have that building over there. So I don't think it's wow. the Kelly goal. Wow. wow. So what do you think it is instead? I think you still haven't given an answer. You just said you're just, you're what just giving it? your knowledge of geography, <laughs> going on and direction. I mean, I'm, I'm great with geography, but I don't know if I'm going to be great with this question. And so, Tyler, let's no go. Answer. I think this is your call. For a lot of game. analysis there for no yeah. answer, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just go ahead and roll the clip and see if uh, if they're right. Let's see it. It's a miss, oh. and he gets lit up, and the penalty. So oh. neither of you guys were right. A little, a little uh, trick right. question so there. Not all they goals. So one to yeah. one. Yeah. All right. Okay. Got you guys there. Should have known it should, would not have been two straight goals. That's mm. on me. Should have, could have, would have. All right. All right. Well, let's roll the third clip. Logan McNaney goes off his helmet. Incredible save. That's all I got. Josh, pretty I, confident I, there. I, I'm, Just I'm like going Brandon. with that. Yeah. yeah. The right. Yeah. I mean, whenever you have number 30 in net, you, you got to <laughs> bet that he's going to make the play. Well, I mean, you can see number 27 in white right here. If this guy doesn't shoot it off McNaney's helmet, like you're saying, he's going to get obliterated by 27 in white. So <laughs> yeah. he probably shot it wisely. Let's, let's take a look. All right, let's, All take, right, it, let's, let's take a look and see who's paying attention. Bonk, oh, you were right. right. Josh knows. Josh Bing knows bong. ball right off McNaney's helmet. That's two to one, that team, I'm pretty sure. Um, so we've only got one more for you guys, so let's go ahead and roll the clip and see if we can get one more in. Oh, what that was short. Here? Okay, oh, yeah. hold on. That was, that was short. Um, I, I had no clue who that is, first of all. Um, I didn't get to see it. I want to... No, actually, I'm not confident. Do you have any idea? Well, I Ben, don't. Ben, you got to remember that this time Rutgers doesn't have the ball, so it's not going to be a Will Schaller cross check. Uh, hey, I mean, I know I like that about, logic. I know so much about Will Schaller cross checks, but do I don't know close? who has the ball in this clip, so that really can't help me, can it? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go Daniel Malt's score because he has not Good been answer. in any of these, and he's one of their best offensive players. So I feel like that's. My logic there is precise. It's a good guess. Like ben and Tyler, you got anything for us? I mean, that's that's a pretty good guess. Whenever Danny Maltz was on the field, balls were just fine in the back of the net this year. All right, well, let's All roll right. the clip let's and uh, see who's right. It was a goal, a rebound oh. goal oh. from oh. Braden oh. Irksa. Oh. Yeah. 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 So you got the Wait goal part right, no. but no. not the player. We've got to bring player. something up that you guys like we got him. neglected. We got him. You got you guys. Well. Daniel Maltz didn't play against Rutgers, did he? 
He was out no, in the Ohio State game. You're right. The, you're right. the yeah, Rutgers yeah. game was the next game. Mulch yes. didn't play, and then he was limited in that game against Hopkins. So you knew that. Half a point still, for that? Hmm? Do you get half a point for that, or what's the what's the ruling? I think we give ourselves half a point, and so you right. knew that and still didn't give an answer. <laughs> you make the you hey, stood there in well, silence. You left me hanging. I like a deer in headlights is <laughs> what I just did. Yeah. Here, you guys, you guys did a great TSC. job with your analysis. It's embarrassing for me. You guys did a great job, gentlemen. This has been a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having us Thanks, on. Guys. It was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Be sure to follow all these guys as Maryland heads into conference play. Well, now it's time to crown our end of season awards. Let's kick it off with our Offensive Player of the Year, Braden Nerxa. The attacker had a solid sophomore campaign, leading the team in points with 35 and goals with 22. The Terps will look towards Nerxa as a pivotal piece to get past Penn State and for the rest of tournament play. Congrats to Braden on being named our Offensive Player of the Year. And on the other side of the ball, how can we not go with the Big Ten's Defensive Player of the Year? Here he is again, Ajax Zapatello. The senior def defender caused 18 turnovers this season, which is tied for second in the Big Ten. He was third on the team in ground balls and constantly guarded the opponent's best offensive player, including Syracuse Joey Spolina, the nation's leading point scorer at the time. If the Terps have Big Ten tournament aspirations, Zapatello must continue his prolific play. Congrats to Ajax on being named our Defensive Player of the Year. And for our MVP, who else could we have picked except the star of the show, Ajax Zapatello? The veteran defender has been the brightest star for the Terps this season. Zapatello was the number one ranked defender against the top 15 offenses this season. And if he continues to play like that, his effort and heart can lead this Maryland squad back to the top in the postseason. Congrats to Ajax on also being named our MVP. Alrighty, Andrew, we've gotten to that point of the show where we share our top five plays from the 2024 season. Why don't you get us started? Let's do it. At number five, we have Logan McNaney, bonk, right off the helmet, using his noggin. Let's see it again. Crush from Nemo will be proud. Way to use your noggin, dude. At number four, we got Daniel Kelly with this top shelf snipe. He grips this one and rips it in the toy department. He did not want the goalie to get that one. Look at the zip on that thing. At number three, we have Braden Irksa, rebound and the score, bounding and astounding. Shout out Clyde Frazier. What a goal, way to stay with it. Love the Knicks reference, McBride. All right, here we go. At number two, we got Jack McDonald, the long stick midi, hurling down the field and getting it way over the, the goalie's shoulder. And at number one, we have Luke Weirman, Fogo goal, taking, it, taking the face off all the way, coast to coast, and scores. That's how you do it himself. He flexes on him at the end oh, with some pizzazz. Love it. Well, Ben, that will do it for our last show of the year and the last in focus show of the year. It's been an honor to be beside you at the desk this whole season semester. I would not want to do it with any other partner. Be sure to check out our final show of the school year, as well as the lovely Kira Bruno's last show on Tuesday. In the meantime, be sure to keep up with all of Terrapin Sports Central's coverage on X, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and online at terrapinsportscentral.com. We'll see you next time.